Hello, this is my analytical podcast on Harry Potter and the Deathly Hallows Part 2, released in 2011. It stars Daniel Radcliffe as Harry Potter and follows the final chapter in his journey to beat Voldemort. It uses a wide variety of different cinematography, editing and sound techniques. I will be breaking this podcast into three sections. Section 1, Cinematography Techniques. Section 2, Editing Techniques. And Section 3, Sound Techniques. I hope you enjoy. Section 1. One cinematography technique used in this movie is depth of field. One clip shows that Voldemort is the only subject in the shot and as we are unable to see his surroundings, this creates a sense of meaning for the audience and this makes us aware that we are only meant to be seeing him in this shot. The movie uses a range of different lighting that frequently changes. This is added to create a certain mood within the scene. For example, when we see Voldemort die, the scene gradually gets darker and there is not any bright lights in the scene, which can connotate emotions like happiness and joy. This can make the audience feel sympathy for the subject, despite him being the villain. Harry is also shown facing Voldemort, and we can see that a wide shot has been used to make Harry look bigger than he actually is. As well as this, Harry is also shown to be the only character in the scene. Consequently, this creates a sense of importance within the audience about Harry, and we can understand that Harry is feeling like he is winning. As the film is coming to a finish, we see Harry and Voldemort both being shot with a close-up. This scene also uses the 180 degree rule and we are easily able to tell that it was shot from one side of the axis. Both of these techniques can highlight the importance of the final scene and the connection between the two characters. The last scene of Voldemort is created with an overhead shot. It is similar to a high angle shot and this particular camera shot can be used to capture action from above. This gives a different perspective on Voldemort and the atmosphere around him. This makes it seem as though we are looking down on Voldemort and diminishes his importance in the movie. Section 2 one main editing technique used is cross-cutting. This is visible to us when Harry and Voldemort are fighting. After we see this, it cuts to a scene where we see Ron and Hermione being chased by a snake, and soon after, Neville killing the snake. After this, it cuts back to Harry and Voldemort. This makes it clear to us that both the scenes are connected and that one has a bigger impact on the other. One of the most used and simple editing techniques, a cut, is using the scene multiple times when switching to different subjects' perspectives. One moment we are focused on Voldemort and the next we are focused on Harry. This happens multiple times and similar to cross-cutting can give a sense of connection between the multiple continuing shots. In one scene we see Harry grab Voldemort and jump off of the school building. This is an example of cutting on action as the scene cuts and changes to a different perspective of the characters. This happens multiple times and makes the flow between the clips much smoother and preserves continuity. This prevents the audience from being confused and shows us an easily understandable selection of clips. Section 3. Diegetic sound is a use of sound that is present whilst filming. This includes dialogue. Harry is shown speaking to Voldemort before jumping off of the school building. This is the only dialogue shown in the scene and this can show us that Harry's words may have been very significant. It also allows the audience to focus more on the action scenes that follow instead of having to follow more speech or a narrative. As well as this, soon after the dialogue is finished, we see both Harry and Voldemort crash to the floor. We are able to hear the sound of them falling and rolling on the floor and the sound of their hands connecting to the floor in an attempt to reach their wands. This is a natural sound that would have been heard whilst filming. However, the audio sounds as though it has been edited to make it seem more like an echo. This draws in the audience's attention to the scene and makes us wonder who will get to their wand first. Despite the scene including diegetic sound, it also includes non-diegetic sound, for example sound effects. When Harry and Voldemort both cast a spell, it creates a loud blast, or when Harry and Voldemort fall from the school building, we hear the sound of them flying through the air and hear some other unnatural sounds that are not describable. As well as this, when Neville kills the snake, it creates an unnatural sound that would have definitely been edited to be created. This makes the scene seem very realistic to the audience, despite the story being about a world of magic, as the sounds blend very well to the scenes they are given to. Over the entirety of the film, music has been added over certain scenes. This has been for a number of reasons. For example, in one of the final scenes of the film, music is added over Harry and Voldemort fighting. This causes suspense within the audience as we want to know who is about to win this fight. To add to this, music has also been put over scenes that connotate happiness or put over scenes that suggest sadness. Both of these examples can be used to set a specific mood or show a certain emotion. One last sound technique that has been used are Foley sounds. These are used to create the sound of magic coming out of a wand. This sound was created with things such as water, water freezing and sometimes even fire. 
This creates a sense of meaning as it shows us the sounds we hear can entirely be made up of our imagination and not only what we see on screen. I hope you have enjoyed this analytical podcast and have learnt some facts about the production of Harry Potter and the Deathly Hallows Part 2. Thank you for listening.